all over the building, would you stand? Keep worshiping, keep worshiping. Just wondering if there's anyone who has a worship or a praise for the fact that the wind did not knock you over. That the wind didn't blow your faith away. That the wind didn't blow your confidence away. That the wind didn't blow your self-esteem away. It blew. Look at somebody and say, it blew. But I'm still standing. It blew, but I'm still standing. Young people, it's okay to worship. It blew, but you're still standing. Family, it's okay to worship. It blew, but you're still standing. You ought to give God, I'm still standing praise right now. Your reality is like mine sometimes. The wind did blow, and the wind did knock me down. But can anybody praise God that he lifted you back up? If that's your reality, can you praise that he lifted you back up? Mistakes and all, he lifted you back up. you back up. While others judge you, he lifts you. So God, today we thank you. Not because it's a cliche. But when I reflect even on what I went through yesterday, even how I woke up feeling today, if there's nothing that I can thank you for, it's for the fact that I've got life. So God, thank you for raising me up for another day of purpose. Thank you for another day of destiny. Thank you for another day that you can use me. Thank you for another day that my testimony seems more real than it was yesterday. Thank you for the fact that I'm getting stronger today. Right where you are, give God your best praise. Give God your best praise. Praise God or women, praise God. Let me say it again. You are sitting around a miracle. If there's any miracles in the room, you ought to make some noise. Because praise becomes contagious. It's hard for you to be around all this praise and act cool. It's hard for you to be around all this worship and act like you got it all together. I said, is there anybody in here that knows you're a miracle? So, so, we thank God. Because we know, we know, we know that God did not have to do it, but he did, but he did. We are thankful to be in the house of God today. I, I want y'all to make some noise for ye, Paul, because uh, 
it is it is rare um, because of media, social media, and media that we get a chance to celebrate young people. And um, I don't know about y'all, but the fact that they just in church singing about the Lord when they could be doing something else, when they're tempted to be doing something else, when they're in a community that wants them to do something else, I just want to praise God that you're praising God. I just want to praise God that you're praising God. I just want to praise God that you're praising God. I just want to praise God that you're praising God. If the adults won't do it, then let the kids do it. If the adults won't do it, then let the kids do it. Some of y'all, some of y'all, 
have gotten too used to church. Because um, it's, it's difficult to watch kids praise the Lord and you just be a spectator. Let me, let me say this. Ray just told me, just another praise report, that 49 of the kids that you see singing up here got baptized on Wednesday, gave their life to the Lord on Wednesday. If you can't shout for that, do this real quick and, and y'all stay right where you are because because dad I was struggling with the scripture but it fits right here can I just read y'all my text and then y'all do what y'all want to do Acts chapter 4 verse 31 it says this after they prayed the place where they were meeting was shaken Let me read it again. After they prayed, the place, somebody say the place, that they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled. Look at somebody and say, I'm filled, baby. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. You ought to open your mouth and give God the best praise you can for the feeling that's in the room. they prayed the 
place where they were meeting was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Father God, do what you do because I don't know what to do unless I depend on you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look at somebody and say, God is shaking up things on our behalf. God is shaking up things on our behalf. Um, I would do all the preliminary stuff, but then I'd probably kill the spirit, so I don't want to do that. Look at somebody and say, God is shaking things up on our behalf. This is a team thing. This is a partnership thing. Uh, my, my father has been dealing in the book of Acts uh, from this theme entitled Reset. Somebody say reset. reset. Anytime God resets some things, it is uh, he has the ability, let me say it that way, to shake things up in our lives, to shake things up in our lives. And oftentimes we'll pray that, Lord, I want you to move in my life. I want you to change some things. I want you to shake things up. But there's a flip side to this because when God shakes things up, there has to be a little bit of chaos. It's impossible for things to be shaken up and everything stay the same. So if, just if, you are in a season where God is shaking, look at somebody and say that I'm in a good place because God is getting ready to reset me. He's getting ready to reset me. And, 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 and last week, uh, Pops dealt with Acts chapter 3. Uh, and we know the story of, of, of the blind beggar and, and all that transpired into that story, and then we go into Acts chapter 4, um, where, where Peter uh, and, and John are, are now being confronted, and I'm going somewhere with this story, are being confronted after they performed a miracle. And, and what it got me to thinking is, and I need everybody to hear this, that you can do the right thing and still be criticized. Anybody ever done the right thing for somebody and it still was not good enough? <laughs> Made the right choice and you still got criticized? Uh, changed your behavior and you still got judged? You can do the right thing and still be criticized. And so these two are, are, are in a confrontation because any time you go through a reset. What you believe will always be challenged. Here's it, here it is in the text is that they are now confronted uh, with this miracle and people are saying, well, wait a minute, who are you? How do you think that you have the right to say that you can heal in Jesus' name? And how do you have the right to believe that you can heal those who are sick? And, and, and the response becomes so simple because Peter is, is very clear that he's going to represent Jesus Christ no matter what. 
And if we're going to have a reset, and if we're going to have a shakening, then we must have a generation like we saw today here in this building that is not afraid to lift up the name of Jesus. Watch this, at all costs. At all costs, because here it is that, that they're being challenged about their miracle. They're being challenged about what they've been called to do. And, 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 and now that they've been um, tested on this, uh, I believe that when God is getting ready to shake things up in your life, it is because not necessarily you've done something wrong, but look at somebody and say, it's because I passed my test. I passed my test. Um, because their first test was to deny Jesus before those who were judging them. Their first test was to deny Jesus before uh, the group of people that were accusing them. And, and this got me to thinking, um, because God is getting ready to bless them, uh, as we're going to read in verse 31. But it got me to thinking something, Brandy. Uh, yeah, looking for you. Um, sometimes God can't bless you. Because you only believe him when he's blessing you. Amen. Let me say that again. Sometimes God can't bless you because you only believe in him when you are being blessed. And that means that your relationship with God is one-sided. One-sided. You only shout in church when you've had a good week. You only shout to brag about your new opportunity. But can you feel like you're blessed even when things are not going right? Can you feel like you're blessed when you are being tested? Can you feel like you are blessed when everyone is up against you? And watch this, it's not because of who you are, it's because of what you believe in. I want to talk to some people in the room today that are going through a stage in your life where you're trying to change everything about you and you believe that God, what God has said about you, but there are people around you asking you, who do you think you are? How do you think you can act that way? I remember how you used to be and what they don't understand is that you believe in the God that's in you so much that even in your mistakes, you still praise God because you're a miracle. So, if God is going to shake things up on our behalf, what we believe in must be tested. Now watch this. If God is going to shake things up on our behalf, he's going to do it because who you are was threatened and you never back down. Amen. If you read the text, he goes before the Sanhedrin and, and listen, they threatened his life. They said, well, listen, they're trying to find an accusation to, to put him in jail, Simeon, to, to lock him away. And as a matter of fact, they go as far as to say, well, you can continue to do what God has called you to do. <clears throat> Watch this. But you can't do it in Jesus' name. Okay, okay, okay. And, and that's why we have a generation now of people who like to call our God everything but Jesus. This is why Yeepaw is important so that we raise up a generation who's not afraid to say that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And even if your freedom is threatened, he's still Jesus. Even if you lose friends, he's still Jesus. Even if they don't like you anymore, he's still Jesus. And so he's being threatened. He's saying, listen, <clears throat> we can put you in jail for this. We can lock you away because that's what people like to do with potential and promise when they can't control it. They like to contain it so they can control it. And so God is getting ready to shake some things up because you've been threatened about your future and you never back down. <laughs> and, and here's what Peter does. He, he gets the boldness to talk back to those who are in charge. And I got this revelation, Dr. T, that sometimes you have to learn how to handle people who think they are above you, but really are beneath you. <laughs> see, see, some of you, some of us, 
we think that titles matter. When in actuality, swoop, character matters. Some of us think that our gift matters, who we are in the church matters, but how we treat people is what matters. And now you have pumped yourself up to believe that you're over everybody around you because you got a little blessing in your life. But no, 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 no. God has positioned you for just this season because the people that you're looking down on are on their way above you. I wish I had some help in here. Because it's the attitude of, of the leaders. They're saying, listen, uh, we're talking down on you because you're just an apostle. You're uneducated. You don't know anything. And ain't that how they do us as this generation of young people where it's like you ain't been through nothing. No, I do go through stuff. I wish I had a young person in here that can talk back. My age does not disqualify me from trials. My zip code does not disqualify me from troubles. So... Because they say you're not educated, you're not sanctified enough, you're not churchy enough, then how can you talk about this healing, this Jesus? And Peter responds, <clears throat> don't you see the miracle standing right before you? <laughs> what a response. He's not arguing his education. He's not arguing where he comes from. He's not arguing his capabilities. He's saying, I'm showing you proof. I want to talk to some people in the room who are tired of arguing with other people about your progress. You're trying to convince other people that God is elevating you. You're trying to convince other people that God is changing you. And Peter says, listen, I don't got to argue with you. You see the proof. And that's why some of us don't have a testimony that we can share because we don't have any proof. Woo. So he says, listen, you don't, you don't see this miracle standing right here? I think that should be your response for the week when you're dealing with people who are ignorant of your potential. Your response should just be, don't you see this miracle standing right here? God ain't working in your life. Don't you see this miracle standing right here? You're not changing your life. Well, I ain't cussed you out yet. Don't you see this miracle standing right here? Your attitude is changing. You're smiling more. Don't you see this miracle sitting right here? Here, y'all don't know where to praise God because you're looking at a row full of people that have a miracle. Don't you see the miracle sitting right there? You ought to praise God for somebody on your row that's got proof that God is still working miracles in your life. He says, he says listen, I, I, I see the miracle right here. And then, Carla, um, they go into a huddle. I'm just telling the story with a couple points here and there. But, but they go into a huddle, and they say, well, basically, we can't find anything to charge them with. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, I, I want to talk to some people who you know you ain't do it, but they still blame you for it. They'd be like, well, what Kyle did, I wasn't even in town. <laughs> All right, here it is. Here it is. And, and so, so they, they go in and say, well, we can't find anything against them. And when God is resetting your life and about to shake things up, here's what I got. It's don't give people ammunition to assassinate you. <laughs> Leave them in a place where they can't find anything wrong. As a matter of fact, let them make up some stuff. And then when it comes your way, just be like, that's how I used to be. That was the old me. You can't find any 
thing wrong. Because I haven't given you ammunition to assassinate my assignment. Ooh. Okay. All right. So, so, so then, so then they leave, they leave, they get set free. But they get set free. And, and, and this is, this is where I want to go. Um, because if God is going to shake things up in your life, then your relationships have to add up. Your relationships have to add up. Because the text says <clears throat> that Peter and John were released. And watch this. They go directly to their friends. Amen. So y'all so churchy, y'all don't even know where to get it. They didn't go to church. They didn't go to the temple. They went to their peoples. Anybody got some peoples in here? Some of y'all ain't clap. Y'all lonely out here. <laughs> I'll be your people, so I, if you need one. <laughs> Says they go to their peoples, goes to their friends, and share everything that they had just gone through. And I want you to see the response. Because, again, you got to be with the right people in the right place in order for God to move sometimes. It says they go to the people and, and they share their story and, and, the, and the people begin to immediately pray. Okay. Now, I know this is fundamental and it's, it's real elementary, but I don't know about you, but I need friends that know how to pray. Let me say it again. I need friends that know how to pop off and pull up, but I definitely need some friends that know how to pray. Y'all just want the pop up and the pop off. But see, it's the prayer life of my friends that help lift me when I'm down and out. It's the prayer life of my friends that lifts me out of my pit when I can't get out. It's the prayer life of the people who are praying for me when I can't even pray for myself. You ought to praise God right now that there is someone, at least one person somewhere praying for you. Okay. All right. All right. Um, because when people hear your problems, they should pray. So, so that's what happens in the text. It says the people heard their problem and they began to pray. Now, different texts say different things. I've read a couple different versions and it just said place. Somebody say place. And so, so let's assume that it was in church, but then I'm not kind of radical, so I want to assume that it was not in church. It was not in church. Okay, it was just they pulled up to a place. Somebody say a place. Okay, all right. Now, I could name some places that are not church-like, but y'all won't say amen. Some of us have needed prayer in ungodly places. Look, look at somebody and say, say amen before he come down your street. Yeah. Yeah, they don't want me to go there. They don't, they don't want me to go there. All right. I'm a, uh, okay. All right. All right. So, so, so they pull up to a place and they pray. And it got me to thinking that if I'm going to have the right people in the right place, that I need people who don't always pray for me in private, but I need people who know how to pray for me in public. Because if God is going to shake things up, watch this, this is no quiet affair. If God's going to make noise for me, then my people got to make noise for me. I, I don't like a friend that's too quiet. 
You're too sneaky when you're too quiet. But, but when I'm going through, if you can pull up in public and no matter who's around and speak into my life to help change my attitude, to help pull me off the ledge, to help, help me get over the hump, then you are a true friend indeed. Because, because the shakening is not going to be a quiet affair. All right, okay, all right. Um, my last point in this, this story, because I was just telling you the story, now I want to share with you what tripped me up. Mom, the text says that after they prayed, that the room shook. And everyone in the room was filled with the Spirit. I'm going to jump out here. Come on. It did not say that they accepted the invitation of the doors of the church being open. It did not say that they had to go through 12 steps in a discipleship class. It did not say they had to go through the traditional settings of how y'all act in church. It just said that the spirit popped up and showed out. Would you look at somebody and say, I know you don't think I qualify. But when the Bible says all, that includes me too, baby. You ought to fist bump somebody right now and tell them that includes me, baby. You're not the only one around here getting filled up. You're not the only one around here being blessed. You're not the only one around here changing. That goes for me too. Okay, all right, all right. Here, here's why friendships are important. Um, I, and, and I'm walking, I'm, I'm hoping my dad is watching so he can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but, but here's the question, Ma. How did the spirit get there in the first place? Okay, okay. Because some of you think, that it's only because of the old way of church where you had to tarry and pray for hours and hours and hours and hours and, and, and sleepovers in the church and everything only for God to move at 6 in the morning after you've been praying since 12 the day before. All right, watch this. Can, can y'all go to verse 8 for me? Um, I, I just want to scroll back. I want to scroll back. Um, verse 8, Dr. T, because uh, my dad's not here, so you can take the mic if I'm wrong. <laughs> verse 8, right? Peter, Peter uh, is, is uh, they ask him, they say, Bob, what power or name do you do this? Oh, verse 8 is right here. Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he's already filled, Sierra. And then verses later in 31, he gets to the place. Don't miss this. Which means that you got to have friends who bring something to the table. I'm done. I am done. I am done. You can't have friends that just come to take the spirit. You got to have friends that bring the spirit. You can't have friends that just want your joy. You got to have friends that bring the joy. You can't have friends that want to take your peace. You've got to have friends who bring the peace. And here it is. It's so unselfish of Peter. It's so unselfish of Peter. Because then he goes to the place and the Bible says that they all prayed on one accord. If you read the text, they're singing, they're worshiping, they're praying. But there's only one person in the room that has what everybody else needs. And so I'll say this for a couple of you in the room who can catch it and praise God on it. I thank God you didn't die where you were 
because of what you brought to my situation. I, I just need five folks to just give God praise. If you can celebrate the fact that God has put people in your life that bring something to the table. They don't just take from you, they give to you. How did the spirit get in the room, in the place, in the first place? This is why church is hard to get y'all to shout because y'all don't bring the spirit, y'all come looking for the spirit. But when you come in with thanksgiving, when you come in with the praise, then we don't got to coach you to celebrate because you came with a celebration. And when you come with a celebration, then the Holy Spirit can fill the room. Would you look at your neighbor and say, can you fill this room right now? With every ounce of praise you got, can you fill this room? With every thank you, in with the spirit and everyone else is filled. Yes, they're on one accord. Yes, they're praying, inviting God in. But when you come in with the spirit of God on your life, any and everything around you has to change. So much so that it says that Peter had boldness. He had boldness. And, and sometimes you have to let your boldness loose. So people respect what's on the inside of you because they're too busy judging the outside of you. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's stand. Let's stand. I'm done. Y'all know I can't hoop like my dad, so if he want to come grab the mic and close it, he can. <laughs> All right. When, when God is shaking things up in your life, then you and other things in your life should shift. The shaking up also brought about a unity. Because in the verses after that, it talks about how the people needed for nothing. Because what everybody had, everybody needed. Isn't it interesting that God will fill your spirit before he fills your material desires. Because if I don't have the spirit, then I don't know how to handle the blessing. This is why we mismanage our miracles. Because as soon as we get it, we lose the spirit. And then we mismanage it. But the spirit is attached to the very thing that God is trying to do and move in your life. And so I want to thank God right now for the feeling that's in this room. For the feeling that's in this room. Um, because they're not empty in the text. They're not empty. Peter is being challenged, but he's not empty. And we think that our challenges in life mean that we need to be filled up again. No, you're already full. That's why you're going through the worst season of your life, but still blessing other people around you. That's why you're being persecuted and tried and talked about for what you believe in, but you're still filling other people around you. This is why your family's in, sh in shambles, but you're the glue that's holding it all together. Because you're in a position to feel. All over this building, just close your eyes right where you are. Lift your hands. And pray right now that you become Peter. That you be filled. So wherever you go, others can be filled. 
ask God to give you the boldness to believe in what you believe in even when others don't believe it for you. I want to pray for some people today uh, before I pass the mic over. You're in a season right now where you just need to be reminded that you're full of everything that God has for you. You've been listening to people long enough. I'm telling you, you have nothing to bring to the table. That you don't have what it takes. Today, God is going to kill that lie and lift you to where you need to be. If you're in this building right now, I want you to come meet me at the altar. If you want God to fill you in a whole other area of your life. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to Christ. You can come down here and we can pray with you as the ministry teams here at Calvary comes. We can pray for you here. Maybe you want to rededicate your life. Maybe you missed the opportunity and you want to get baptized just like these young people. You can come as well. As we close this out, I want you to continue to pray for yourself. Father God, we thank you and we honor you for who you are. It's uncomfortable, it's weird, it's little out of place, but you're shaking things up in my life. I'm being challenged simply because I'm believing in myself. I'm being challenged because I want a deeper and closer relationship with you. And in this challenge, it seems like I'm being contained. Free me today. Free me today. God, thank you that your Holy Spirit guides us and directs us and convicts us, but also gives us boldness to speak up and to speak out. So we pray right now for a generation of young people that come after us, that they will carry on the name of Jesus, not just in church, but also community. That they will carry on the name of Jesus, not with shyness, but with boldness that they will carry on the name of Jesus, not worrying about what others think of them because they understand that they're fearfully and wonderfully made by a wonderful creator. Give us boldness on our jobs. Give us boldness in our homes. Give us boldness in our communities so that we can shake up a generation that will eventually shake up a city, that will eventually shake up a nation. Bring your power back to earth, God. Let it start within us. We are the change we want to see. We are the power of God that will be manifested in our immediate circles. So thank you right now for the feeling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more time, give God your best praise.